If you're the beneficiary of a trust or an estate, a partner in a partnership, or a shareholder in an S-corporation, you're going to have income or losses from those entities that will have to be reported on your tax return. You may have received one of these forms, called a Schedule K-1, and wondered what to do with it. This video attempts to answer that question. I'm the Tax Geek, and here are K-1s, oversimplified. Trusts, estates, partnerships, and S-corporations all have the potential for generating income. Rather than paying taxes on this income directly, these entities usually pass this income along to the people or other parties who comprise the entity, who then pay taxes on their shares of the income. Thus, these types of organizations are known as pass-through entities. All pass-through entities divide the income they generate among their beneficiaries or members according to the trust document or will, partnership agreement, LLC, or corporate charter. Since different pass-through entities distribute income in different ways, there are three different types of K-1. One for trusts and estates, one for partnerships, and one for S-corporations. The three forms look very much alike on the surface. Part 1 of each schedule provides information on the entity itself, including its employer identification number, the entity's name and address, and, in the case of an estate or trust, the fiduciary's name and address. Part 2 gives the taxpayer identification number, name, and address of the beneficiary, partner, or shareholder. These parties can be individuals or other entities. It's not uncommon, for example, for a partnership to be a shareholder in an S-corporation, or vice versa. On both the partnership and S-corporation K-1s, you'll find ownership information for each partner or shareholder. This information is crucial to determine how much of the income, deductions, and credits should be allocated to each partner or shareholder. Here you'll also find clues as to whether the income or losses are passive or non-passive. Part 3 is the part we're most interested in. This part contains the recipient's share of any income, deductions, or credits that might affect the recipient's tax liability. Many of these items are the same from schedule to schedule, such as interest, dividends, capital gains, and ordinary business income. And some entries are unique to each schedule, such as the estate tax deduction and final year deductions on the estate and trust K-1, or guaranteed payments and self-employment earnings on the partnership K-1. So where do all these numbers come from? To report their income and deductions, estates and trusts file Form 1041, partnerships file Form 1065, and S-corporations file Form 1120-S. Scheduled K-1 for Form 1041 takes its figures directly from the front page of the return, apportioned among the beneficiaries according to the will or trust agreement. Partnership and S-corporation returns both have a Schedule K as part of the return. Schedule K breaks down the income, deductions and credits of that entity to categories that match those on that entity's K-1. Most of these items are then apportioned amongst the partners or shareholders according to their ownership interests. The items that can be on a K-1 can go well beyond what's called out on the schedule. All the entries highlighted here can contain multiple items, each with its own code. Most of these codes are defined on either page 2 of the K-1 or in the schedule's instructions. It's not at all unusual for a K-1 to come with multiple pages of explanations and details of the various entries. The same items are often entered in different places on the different K-1s. As an example, tax-exempt interest is reported with a code of A in Box 14 on the Estate and Trust K-1, Box 18 on the Partnership K-1, and Box 16 on the S-Corporation K-1. Plus, there may also be an additional statement attached to the K-1, breaking down the tax-exempt interest by state. So now that we know all that, where do all these numbers from the K-1 go on your tax return? Many of the items on the K-1 go directly to the corresponding line on either the recipient's Form 1040 or the appropriate schedule. Using the Partnership K-1 as an example, these items go directly on the 1040, these on Schedule D, this on Schedule E page 1, this on Schedule SE, and this on Form 4952. These entries here, involving business and rental income or losses, are entered on page 2 of Schedule E. 
Enter the information on income and losses for partnerships and S corporations in Part 2 and income and losses for estates and trusts in Part 3. Income or losses from each K-1 are each classified as passive or non-passive. A detailed explanation of passive and non-passive income and losses is beyond the scope of this video, but non-passive income and losses stem from activities you actively participate in. For example, if you're a shareholder in an S corporation and participate in the day-to-day -day running of the business, any income or loss reported to you on a K-1 is considered to be non-passive. This is especially important when it comes to business losses. Many non-passive losses can be used to offset other income, but passive losses usually may only be used to offset other passive income. The income and losses from Schedule E are totaled and entered on Line 41 of the schedule. This total, in turn, is transferred to Line 5 of Schedule 1, which is then added to all the other income on Schedule 1, and the total shows up on Line 8 of your Form 1040. If you're unsure as to where a particular item from a K-1 goes on your tax return, that information can usually be found on both page 2 of the K-1 and in the instructions for that particular K-1. This video is designed to give the broadest oversimplifications regarding Schedule K-1, and there are many, many, many more details to this subject. If you have multiple complex K-1s involving many items, a competent tax professional in your community is the best person to help you interpret them. However, if you'd like to learn more about K-1s and how they can affect your taxes, there will be links to additional resources and information in the video description. Please like the video if you found it informative and share it with anyone else who would find it useful. Subscribe if you haven't already for future oversimplifications of our complex tax system. And of course, your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.